welcome back to What Have You. I am Rachel Jankovic. And today, because Becca is still gallivanting around Greece eating feta and being inaccessible to us, I thought this would be a perfect time for me to bring mom on the show and have her talk with us about Sabbath today. So Nancy Wilson, here she is. Hello, hello, hello. She's here. We're in her little <laughs> office, her her little cubby at Grandpa's house. It is a cubby. It's um, a cubby for sure. So, Mom, all the time we reference, we typically haven't, we've never done a full episode on Sabbath. I feel like it comes up always on the side, but we get so many questions about it because, and a number of people, yay, you guys who are listening, who are starting it and who are like, we're going to do this, I'm going to do this. And I love that. So delighting that people are doing that. So, um, I thought, why don't we just take this time to talk through what you think are kind of the... Let's do it. I would say... Co- like core principles around Sabbath. Like, what's the point? All right, of doing it. So, what is the point? When I I know I have I I maybe you, first we should you know, say what is it? Yeah. In case you didn't listen to previous episodes. Yeah. So every Saturday night we have a dinner, and we invite all of our children to our home. Yep. Well, I'm describing how it got started. This doesn't mean this is how it is right now. But anyway, this is what it is. It's just a kickoff to the Lord's Day. And it's family it's, and family and, and close family yeah. and friends. We say lots of daisy chain and relatives. It, yeah, and it's and it But initially it wasn't that. Initially it was just yeah. us. So we had yeah. guests, we invited guests. So when Doug decided we really should start doing it, it's kind of like a Sunday dinner, the old fashioned Sunday dinner only for us we started doing it on Saturday night because Sunday having you know with Doug having a heavy load right he just liked the idea of it as sort of the pre-game well like a up. kickoff but yeah, then Sunday is kickoff. still very pretty quiet and restful like yeah, we do all the right. hubbub Saturday night Saturday night, night. so yeah. when we started and I just say for those of you who are starting with little kids it's so exciting I'm so proud of you we did you start, go. <laughs> yeah, we did not start until our kids were older. So Becca was engaged to Ben, so that made her twenty, right? Right. So that made Nate eighteen. I think and you, you started 16. it. You started it. We had some friends who were doing a, mm-hmm. who were doing a Sabbath dinner. Oh who yeah, had younger kids. I think. Yeah, and I wasn't it Becca and Ben getting married that gave you the nudge of like a reason to have a regular gathering point like if I don't know because they I, were engaged when we started it maybe but, but I think it, it was, was kind of around like, that transitional time yeah. of like we always like, are growing up we had a very strong dinner time family culture oh yeah so dinner time we talked and talked and, and dad laughed was and always and, there at dinner always yes and that and, was but that was a that was a strong anchor in yes. our family life. So when we yes. started Sabbath, it was more of a set aside, a special dinner a special time. special dinner. Instead of the... And, Saturday night special dinner. And it was at the time of our life as kids where we were not as regularly all there at the same time. Because like here's Becca yeah. getting married and we were... Yeah. Um, I feel like, well, I was still in high school, but it was probably basketball and oh, volleyball and, and things happening. And, yeah, and so it was kind of yeah. like, we had lots of interruptions to the normal. And so this was a new kind of regular yeah. thing to well, do. Well, and it began a rhythm that we had no idea how important, how valuable, how strengthening it was going to be. We no. just thought, this is a good idea. We had just, this might sound funny, but we had just come to the conclusion that we should be drinking wine. That mm-hmm. this was how we celebrate before the Lord, and so we we instituted wine. That's at true. Sabbath dinner, and actually, that we never the, drank wine, never ever before. as a um, even at like Thanksgiving I mean, or Christmas. No, I don't think we would no, ever no. have had I mean, wine. We we had we might drink wine. I remember um, Doug was teaching a course at the U of I in philosophy, and they had a dinner with all the profs, mm-hmm. and he was. Just a part time yeah. timer, but anyway, we decided ahead of time if they serve wine, we're gonna have it because yeah, and because that'll surprise them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so, wait a minute, we're going yeah, into so a place where they might have wine. It's not like yeah. we were allergic to it or anything. We just mm-hmm. were not wine drinkers, but we came to the conclusion that we should be because of how the Bible describes it. It's a celebratory drink. We're celebrating the Lord's Day. 
And so, said in Isaiah about the Lord will make for the a feast of fat things, mm-hmm. a, a feast of it is wine, wine on the leaves. leaves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a wine a, well refined. Like it's the a whole, beautiful picture. It's sort of like, yeah. it's sort of, you would say it's comparable to a Christian being anti-milk and honey. Yeah. Like I mean, where you're like, it right. doesn't mean you have to love it or have it all yes. the time, but this is actually a significant right. part of the imagery that God has that God put in made. the world. So yeah. Doug had grown up in an actual teetotaling family where they right. had signed the pledge back, his parents back in their youth. Doug had never signed a pledge like that, but we knew it was maybe going to rock the boat a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, that we were going to start doing But it doing didn't this. so much. But it wasn't a big deal. No. And so anyway, that made it very and I should special. I just want to say we're, we continue to be a very conservative wine drinking oh, yeah. family. Oh, it yeah. is we do drink wine, but we are not oh, yeah. we're not, not that much. Yeah, it's not like it's a it's, celebratory thing, but not an explosively indulgent I know. thing. And and we enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun gift from God. But I don't and this is a side note, but it's just that I don't appreciate the culture that can develop totally. around the pictures of the wa- the woman always no, with the glass exactly. of wine in her hand, or you know, like or as though you need the wine to cope with how although, obnoxious everybody else is. Some of it is funny, like the apron that says, "Let's see, I cook with wine, and sometimes I put it in the food." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, some of it is funny, but it get get too. No, it Go starts. Too far, it's like, usually done by where, people who don't think drunkenness is a problem. Well, and so it just aren't un- paying attention, you know. Yeah. And there, the thing is, Scripture admonishes the older women, in particular, yeah, to not be addicted to much wine. It doesn't say you may not have it, yeah. but don't be addicted to much. And it doesn't say how many glasses even. No, just but says not. That's make it. sure whatever right. it is, whatever not it is, much. it's not much. Yeah. So I think you can get. You really, particularly older women, we need to pay attention to this. It's to us. It's addressed yeah. to us. So pay attention. Yeah. So okay. So, anyway, so wine so was a big thing. Wine. Yeah. I remember not knowing the first thing about it, and so I went to the grocery store to pick out some wine. And here they, you know, there's a lot yeah. of stuff I had no idea. And a friend was there, who was well versed in wine, and I told him what I was looking for. And so you know what he did very wisely. He pointed me. To this sparkling white wine. Oh yeah, it was ballatory, like, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah, it was like soda pop. Yeah, and so well, woo, not we were, quite. It's well, still, but it's in no way dry. It's, it's, no, it's yeah. a sweet sparkling mm-hmm. wine, and so it was very bubbly, celebratory, yeah. perfect. So we always, so we we began with a toast. Yeah, with our wine on the table. Forgot that because it's been a long time since we've had a ballatory. Yeah, we moved on to red wine, you know. But (laughs) we have. I feel like we may have been in some Sutter home. There was some Sutter home and Corbett Canyon level. (laughs) I don't think I ever did Sutter home, but I know we did a lot of. We moved to the Shiraz that. Australian okay. that comes in the ginormous bottle. Yellowtail? So, is that the yellow one? Yellowtail, yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because that was just a safe, like, whatever. Yeah. This will do. Mm-hmm. But anyway, and so that, now we're so, it, we, we are so sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, is it red or white? Okay. Let's... But anyway, so we got that going. And I'm right. glad I jogged your memory. And that, that the wine but was, was, specifically... you remember it being kind of. Oh, a... yeah, but the wine was a deliberate choice Mm -hmm. that in the same way that we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we're celebrating it. Well, we're not doing the Lord's Supper at Sabbath, but we're celebrating the goodness of God to us in these things. So So, we didn't have wine any other night. We No, it was set aside fun time. And I got little, once the grandchildren started arriving, I started buying little teeny wine glasses so they could have a sip. And around when Knox was, you know, old enough to be kind of talking, um, we went over to Doug's brother's house and they had the tables all set up with the candles and he said, Sabbath. Yeah. Sabbath. So he recognized it. Yeah, and actually Sabbath. Moses did the same thing one time when I put stemmed cups on the table. Yeah. And it's he like, was like, We're having Sabbath? Yeah. Like yeah. just this assumption that if the table is really set, if you're yeah. really looking like exactly. they know and I love that that when they see when they see a table that looks like good things coming, it's, that their thought is the Lord's Day. Right. Like, this is this yeah. is the Lord's Day, and this is how we... So, um, so that's, it was a very intentional move. It's 
Saturday night for us as the kickoff to the Lord's Day. Mm -hmm. We toast, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we have wine. So dad dad lifts his glass and says, this is the day the Lord has made. Yeah. And all the rest of us say, we will rejoice right. and be glad in it. We, yeah. And we toast that way. But we also, uh, then now dad asks the kids a number of questions. Right, somewhere along the line, as the grandkids kept coming, and and they just did, it's amazing, 17 of them now. <laughs> but um, he wrote a little liturgy where he could ask the kids questions. And so we've been doing that for a long time. And they so there is a little liturgy back and forth. Uh-huh. And he does that right after the toast. And then after the liturgy, he prays. And the liturgy is just like questions. And he tailors them to the age of the So kids. there I feel like there we're kinda in between phases because we have people outgrowing uh yeah. being part of that. Like once they're in college really yeah. they're in the adult group out. instead. Mm-hmm. But um I'm trying to think of how they... I have to say every time anybody says, what day is it? I always think, because that's one of the questions for the kids, is what day is it? And they say, it's the, the Lord's, Lord's Day. day. And says, why is it the Lord's Day? Because Jesus rose from the dead. And then what kind of a day is it? It's a sweet day. Um, I just remember Belle was the first one, I think, to get that question, sweet day, wasn't she? Yeah. Because I yeah. see her little fat face. Yeah, well, you the one that I sweet think is... Day. Uh, Seamus saying the answering the dragon, but he just said the blagon, like yeah, it's like, like the yeah. blagon. Um, and then, so w- what is the let's see, I'm trying to think of what are some of the other questions. So There's a lot he, of kids, he, so yeah, he um, asked, Why is it the Lord's Day because Jesus rose? I mean, we could print it up. I know, I'm you trying to think of what it. the other parts of it are because <clears throat> there's some, um, I think he's posted it on his blog before, but yeah, you could and post then the it up. final, the final thing is dad asks the kids, What's the, what's the point of the whole Bible? and they all yell together, Kill the dragon, get the girl. Um, and then we sing, we sing. Uh, Psalm 134, right? Mm-hmm. Be, which is, Behold, bless the Lord, all right. you servants of the other Lord. Other times we have gotten, we've sung other We've ones. been through a lot of different songs. Right, right now we're on a Psalm 134 yeah. kick. Yeah. In and it's Advent, we sing Joy to the World. Right. No, in Advent, the toast is Joy to the World. The, the Lord, Lord has come. come. And we... Yeah, so we shuffle it around. We do. We're, we're we a variety show. Yeah. Um, what I was going <clears> to <throat> say, though, and what I think is going to be most, what I feel like is that we're a solid generation into doing this. It's been right. a long time, and we have grown children now who grew up doing this Yeah, and time. all of the grandkids uh, have been doing this since they were babies in right. the high chair. So I want to talk about, I wanted to talk about a couple of the real get to, not got to, yeah. uh, like just the principles around right. making a party that means something to your family that is not a bad thing to them and Mm -hmm. and it's amazing how quickly women and can sour sweet things by being grabby or demanding and I I think that that's something we would all uh that Becca and Nate and I we would all say you and dad have done an amazing job of is not being there's never been a you will be here for sabbath no that's no. not a player in no. it at all. And and it has never been like, don't you realize you have to come oh my word. because it's no. family time. No. And there is how no... How to kill it. How to kill no, it. No, but absolutely how to kill it because it becomes an entanglement. It's not a free gift. It's not, right. it's not a gift. It's a demand. And right. so I would say... People always want to know the the skinny on how do you do it and who's responsible for what okay, and who yeah. does the dishes. Well, see, um, I, that's a question I get so often is who does the cleanup? And, you know, no offense, but I just always think, come on, people. No, it's, get over yourself. It's a, it's a Christmas dinner. It's a gift to, it's, yeah. it's a celebration to the Lord. I have a dishwasher. I, mean, I always you know. it always makes me laugh though that the disciples when Jesus miraculously makes the food mm-hmm. that he does not miraculously do the cleanup. No, they have to gather. He's, it. He says even though he made the food out right. of thin air, right. he's get some baskets and go right. pick all that up. And I mm-hmm. and I think that that's such an important um, part of the work is rejoicing in the picking yeah, in up. The after. Pick it up. Yeah. And the thing is, when we started, <clears throat> excuse me. There were six of us. Yeah, and it was very and, under control. Yeah, and, and I would get out my granny's crystal mm-hmm. and china because 
when else would I do that? And not I would so anymore. iron the tablecloth and do because it was a tablecloth. Yeah, and then Doug and I bought a Sabbath table from a builder, a wood furniture maker in Lancaster, That's Pennsylvania. An Amish builder, an yeah, Amish builder. And when our table came, it was much rejoicing, and it has twelve leaves. Yeah. So I have sat twenty three. I think it's eighteen foot, it. right? Yeah, it's yeah. eighteen feet. Should have done 20, but it's all right. And so when that thing came, it's like, whoa, you know, this is... Yeah. And it's beautiful. So <clears throat> it became... Then we had boarders, so we'd always invite the boarders when they, mm-hmm. you know, to yeah. join us. And then their boyfriends would be joining <laughs> us. And it grew so that I put more and more I think I think Sabbath table. has developed... <clears throat> I've, I have compared it to a tornado that once it gets going, it just starts grabbing stuff that's yeah. on the edges, like yeah. anything Pulling nearby us, which is why yeah. we have we have a lot of daisy chain family that's all part of it, and yeah. that, that's But wonderful. I love that it was very gradual. So first we had Knox mm-hmm. in a high chair. I bought a very nice mm-hmm. high chair. I thought this will be all the grandkids will sit in this. Ha! We moved on to like we two We dwindled off to Ikeas. like satellite Ikea <clears throat> yeah, high Yeah, because chairs, yeah. we had three babies at one time. Yeah. Anyway, and then um, my tables, you know, I would try to make it pretty. I had to start, I started buying the white buffet plates from Crate and Barrel. Crate I think and Barrel, where you yours. because I couldn't But then we moved on, China. and then we moved on to having like <clears throat> Corel, because Corel stacks Tight yeah. in the yeah. Corel, I thought Rachel introduced me to that. I'd had well, it no, I, I didn't married. introduce you. Yeah, but well, I, but but they do Sabbath. make plain white. They do <coughs> have Sorry. a. They do yeah. make some really they functional. Do. And, and I would say you always, when the kids were really little, one water. of the ways. What do you know? I'm yeah. sitting by a full pack. Sound of effects. Water. It's like a full. There, there you go. go. Sorry, there everyone. Go. No problem. So. Because the kids, when the kids were little, some of the ways that you made a delight to the kids, uh, candy was, on the she would table. put a table runner down and then scatter candy. So like in yeah. the fall, it would be those little Hershey's extra sugar it. pumpkins, those oh, pumpkins yeah. that are yeah. like pow in your face beans, so much sugar. Easter, um, yeah, just and we would put just making it look like and it around like Christmas party. time or even Thanksgiving, you would always put a mandarin in each. Place yes, or like always. just having it look like a fun welcoming. Okay, but let me tell you. So, I love setting a table. Love it. It's my favorite to try to make it look pretty, yeah. especially if you have <clears throat> pretty dishes, you know, flowers, yeah. candle. I love doing that. So, one of the things I had to learn is I got my big table. I get it all set up. It's looking so glam. Yeah, and then. As we proceed into dinner, I look down and it is a total wreck. <laughs> <laughs> and especially because people are like muffling around with well, the tablecloth or, or and and their, wine spilled on it oh, and, and they're throwing blobs their, of potatoes. Ta- their napkins on the table and all this stuff. And I remember having to go, okay, so get over it. You know, yeah. like that is, do you Deal. Know, just stop Deal it. with it. Stop yeah. it right now. And it's been great because. Yeah. And never now it, that gives me joy seeing it all yeah. disheveled. Well, I doesn't remember matter anymore. this was a different topic, but it was something that I remember being so struck by is that like no chef. So I just would notice having little kids. You go you go organize their books. Everybody needs to read right now. Like they're all sitting in the middle of the books because mm-hmm. you have invested mm-hmm. some love and loveliness in this. And right. so they're all in it there attracts them. enjoying it. Yeah. So you go organize the dress ups and even if nobody's played with it for forever, they're in them now. Like yeah. they can't resist it it's if you're doing dr- it. It draws them and, in. And I, or if you totally clean the living room and it looks brilliant, yeah. everybody immediately thinks board games I like yeah. I don't know why they just do it's and really I and I realized good that, observation yeah but I realized that if you if a, no chef would be so pleased if he does this masterpiece and he sends it out if it comes back I untouched know. I know How and sad. The, and the idea that we think if I do a really good job no one should mess it up is so it me it shows that we are not correct about what kind of job we're doing Right. Like we're not making plastic food, we're yeah. making real food, and yeah. so when you set the whole table, you want it to look like not a thing left, and someone probably licked it off when it comes <laughs> back, and that that's a sign of a good job, of you a know, good party, and and that those odd things that are always when you're cleaning up after Sabbath, somebody's like 
twisted, like if you had candy on the table, little foil twists oh, yeah. of stuff or weird napkin arrangements. Oh, yeah. But no, but it's the things people did while they were enjoying each other, while they were right. talking and fellowshipping. Right. They right. they messed up all of this or made a little pile of salt and put like you know Just whatever like random okay. things we've so all done that kind on of thing. our Sabbath table, which is cherry, mm-hmm. really pretty table. Someone must have used like a knife. Like a dinner knife or whatever. I'm at the old one? No, our our Sabbath table. And drew a smiley face. It's a big smile and two eyes. <laughs> and when I found that, you know what? I loved it. <laughs> I need to go look and for that, this, Mom. No, I love that. It is at one of the ends. There is a big, and it's just like a big U and two straight lines for eyes. And when we first got that table, our precious table got yeah. shipped across the country. Doug dropped something on it and chunked a little hole in it. And he said, well, it's been baptized. <laughs> <laughs> and it just is like free, you know, it's yeah. really freeing because there's been a lot of happy times around that table. Mm-hmm. And there are the dents to show it and a big happy face. It's not a grumpy face. Isn't that so funny? And I, I don't know who, who did, that. did that or when. But it does. It's we just, we always laughed that in the last Sabbath table, Daphne was carved on one end. Oh yeah, but it cannot have been Daphne who did it because the name was spelled Spell phonetically wrong. like D A F N. Well, I think Becca Ben and Becca have that table. I know, but yeah. that's that was the it original was our, big our farm first Sabbath table, table that we used until we outgrew it. So yeah. the good thing about the table was I could figure out how many people are coming and put in enough leaves, and I bought three white tablecloths that didn't need ironing different sizes so I could layer them to fit whatever. Right. And then it was the whole... We did a lot of place cards. And you gave me the little porcelain ones that I could I write on. I think I gave you those. Maybe yeah. I got them at La Bella Vita or something. Oh, maybe. But um, to, because you d- we did have to do place cards. Yeah, and I still... And uh, now, right in this little interim, we've been hosting Sabbath at Mom and Dad's house. Um, and it's the seating is always a challenge. Whatever you it do... Is. It is there's some downfall to any side, but we have not because it's summer. We've been doing a we, lot yeah, more. Yeah, I didn't the paper do it in the summer, but of. sometimes it it really frees everybody when they find their place instead yeah. of feeling awkward or yeah. someone inside. Sits near, inside, you kind of have to yeah. give them a place. We but would it takes use, forever. We would to do, figure it, it out. That's true. We would do a dry erase on the plate. Yeah, we started yeah. doing that. We were not as fancy no, as mom. No, but that we well, would write their name on the edge of the plate and. Just, and it worked really and it, well. And it actually works great. It's yeah. an easy way to do it as a... Um, and I always draw... What I think is complicated is I would always... I would make a list of the guests from adults to oh, college, teens, kids. Yes. And then we put everybody <clears throat> down in there. And then you know... Cause this is when it's inside. How many seat it, How many can you seat at each table? Because oh, we have like a satellite table and then this table and then that table and then the big table. And then you try your best to figure out who shall we put where. I don't know. It just well, ends up being... It, it, it ends up being hilarious. It's like well, I would stuff them in into corners. When we had the borders. Mm-hmm. And, we were, and I'd be like, I'm making dinner. You figure this out. Yeah. Because I don't have time to do this. It's really hard. It's very time consuming. But so they would figure out how many chairs, how many leaves, and where we're putting everybody. We did start doing a thing where we try to do this on when we do the seating for adults. Is that we do one on the end of the table with the wife to the side. But then if you immediately start in couples so that you can have, so that couples are overlapping one instead of instead of one couple straight across the table from the other couple yeah you alternate it it so that you end up every couple is so it it works in in couples like a uh, instead of it being like a whole bunch of lines like a ladder it's like a W, like an ongoing like W that. zigzag. That's good. Because it helps the conversation to not lock into like, right. well, the two of us are here, and the, or the right. four of us are here, and then the four of you are there. But honestly, there's always no, something it's, going on. That takes time, and we would have, obviously we'd have guests, and the thing, one of the things I loved about Sabbath, so as we're talking about it, you have to remember it spanned like 22 years. Yeah. So... All these then, things did not happen at one time. No, it's like gradu- It's been a very gradual. Add a seat. Add a, another seat. Add a, another high chair. Add another. You know, it's just a gradual moving. Yep. 
And some of the time I remember putting two or three on those benches, little kids up on uh-huh. benches. Then we moved to having all the grandkids at the table and the adults in the living room because we couldn't fit everyone. Uh-huh. And then the older kids, we started moving into the library and putting the littles uh-huh. at the dining room table. Oh, it's been and very then, complicated. So, and then we moved out and the Jenks picked up the torch. But I am going to say, back to dishwashing, because we kind of forgot about that, is in the early days, I mean, the boarders would wash dishes for me and mm-hmm. sing. Do you remember that? I loved it. You Gentry, say the boarders, but I Casey, was part of that. Casey, Bonnie, for sure. you, Jenny. I was a child, yeah. not a boarder. So she was one of the <laughs> girls, college girls. They would do the dishes, and I loved, loved, loved that. As other boarders moved in, some of them were great about helping. I mean, uh, it was just great. So it was always, it was never But it's assigned. always, you always have a different collection of people volunteers. going. Because yeah. I, I always have liked to help us out with it. And I try, would try even when we were not hosting it, yeah. to make a lot of food or do a lot yeah. of whatever. But there were big stretches. Like when I was pregnant with the twins, I think oh, yeah. I didn't even sort of stir myself no. one way or another to a, do anything. We've all, was... we've all carried each other through yeah. different phases right. for... But see, but you know. when we started, I was young. I mean, you know. <laughs> and so, and when you all, when all the moms were having babies, I remember you all would say, we just come over here and we, and we flop. belly flop. And actually, and I loved that. This that's is the what thing. I wa- that's what I wanted you to do. Yeah. I didn't want you to bring food. I right. wanted to do this for you because you were all in those just, In those phases, we didn't. Uh, I but didn't as, need you as to the help. kids grew yes. as our kids grew they also became more adult like in their appetites yes. which m- so, escalates things quite a bit it into did. into but it was so more... kind in how god did it because i didn't want you to help i wanted it to be a gift every week yeah and so but then as the kids grew up and it got bigger and bigger and bigger it hit this moment when all of a sudden i realized this is getting out of control and it was right then that all of you started saying, hey, we got to help. Yeah, we'll help, yeah. Yeah, and we so noticed. I didn't have to say, I remember the Christmas dinner when we, I, I don't remember who said it, but we barely made it. Like, there was enough food, but we barely made it. And it was like, you all went, <clears throat> I think we need to start. You know? <laughs> I don't remember that. And I think it was just probably the holidays are so crazy because it, it's know. additional But I just remember time, that yeah. as like, okay, this went well, but we see next year. Right. You know, what's coming. Well, and I think that, um, so what I wanted to talk, I want to talk a little bit. I'm thinking about listeners or people who may just be starting this by themselves is that you have a little bit of a disadvantage. Like there, there's an advantage but it goes both ways. It's an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage that you have is that you can see some example of what this kind of seed can grow up into. That you have a ton of like really tight community family loyalties that a lot of that would not be there without a weekly like that this has been really right. instrumental in in the cousins. cousins and and the love across the family of keeping up with each other and what's happening because we're very busy and everyone is doing different things. So. I love seeing how excited the cousins are to see each other, Always. even though they're going to school in the same building. Always they excited to so, see each other, it's, and they love they love Sabbath. They do love and, it hardcore. And I'm and so when we started doing it, it was just out of principle. We didn't see. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say is that that if you're just starting, you might be looking at that and thinking, we'll never get there. But on the other hand, it's a disadvantage to not just be seeing that really all you were trying to do was do a special meal every week and celebrate the Lord's Day. And then it wasn't like, let us, let us plan for the grandchildren was not how it started. It's like, it started in just a small thing. And, and I would say that there have been different times when it was genuinely hard to do. And one of those times that it is hard to do was in when our when there were so many little kids mm-hmm. that it was just like chaos. Absolute yeah. mayhem. There were times when But it was when, fun. Even so. Yes, was... but it would not be anybody's idea of 
a low key dinner party, oh, no, or no, a no. or even no. a the kind of dinner party that would fill your tank up with like yeah. wow, I, it, it had to be done in faith, and it was yeah. hilarious and delightful, but right. only because you were so open handed about what it would be like, right? And that the point was to love the people, not the formality of the event yeah, and or you, the. You have to realize, like I mentioned, the temptation of seeing the table just kind yeah. of fall to bits. But there was another temptation at one point along the way when I was at one end of the table and your dad was at the other yeah. 20 feet away. And I, we were talking about this earlier. I couldn't communicate with him, mm-hmm. you know, or we needed to move on to the next thing. And I, so it, and it was hard to get down there. So I started sitting down beside him. Yeah. And then you and can distract him. And that just made it. So well, much dad has him. Dad has a much louder voice than well, you. you. So think? if he needs to yeah. say, "Okay, everyone, <clears throat> do right. whatever," then that's no yeah. problem. Mom couldn't get our attention, I'm sure. Right. But but the other thing but just is be that, strategic. I'm just saying, uh-huh. depending on your temptation, because I think you know what, I'm just gonna sit down here by him. Whatever's happening at the other end, I'm mm-hmm. fine. And I if find someone is throwing yeah. things around. I'm by dad and Whatever. if he wants to correct it he, he can, can or not our children would never one time okay around. a friend of mine for one of my birthdays gave me this set of these really cute little they were straight glasses different colors do you remember uh-huh. those tall oh, narrow yeah, very tall cute. like three inches yeah. for the kids for their wine mm-hmm. okay so do you remember those Oh my gosh! Were they Every falling week, over all somebody the time? would yeah. break theirs. You know, or yeah, whatever. just a nonstop yeah. shebang. And yeah. the other day, I was packing up, getting stuff out of your house as we're yeah. anyway, and um, I have one left, and I pulled it down, and one of the grandkids—I don't know if it was one of, probably one of your kids—said, "Oh, Daphne." Oh, I remember those. I said, "Yeah, this is the last this one. This is I've all there is." It. Yeah. And it was, they, so she rem- it was a happy memory. So it's just letting things go. Yeah, quit, it's not that precious. I quit using the fancy pantsy crystal <clears throat> way before I got the tippy mm-hmm. short wine glasses. I've got, you know, and no, you but just you, have to. You not, just can't. We can't. And it's really been so healthy for me because to say, mm-hmm. oh no, it doesn't matter. No worries. Yeah, Put maybe us- this is why people got into pewter glassware. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> go ahead and maybe they just wanted them yeah. to be something that was unbreakable yeah. forever. It's like yeah. you know that smiley face. Yeah, you need to go find that. That's you should. kind That's of a, a sweet thing. I should go check that out. And they get to every so often. I would ask you kids, you married kids, like, don't feel like you have to keep doing this. If you want to start doing your own, right, and make this more of a you know different. And the response I've always gotten is. Oh, mom, are you kidding? You know, so yeah, no, nobody. We, but it was we like, love it. We but... let it go. You know, whatever. It doesn't have to be every week. So um, something else that I said, mom, in my in in YooHoo, not about Sabbath dinner, but something I said in YooHoo is that faithfulness does not feel like what it is accomplishing, mm-hmm. and Sabbath has been a real example to me of that because I know it from all the directions. I know it from being the person who comes when you're very tired, when you feel mm-hmm. like you, and it is such a relief to come and have your kids so excited to come and to just show up that there, and you just mm-hmm. show up and you're exhausted, but someone else has right. thought of so of, they have thought of you. They have done things yeah. to me and that, and that is such a relieving thing. But I also know it from the side of being the hostess, and it's hilarious when everybody comes in <laughs> in exactly that mode mm-hmm. of like, so glad someone thought yeah. of me. I, yeah. you know, this is time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I guess the thing I was thinking is that it doesn't feel anything like what it is doing. It's, it's an investment. It's, it is. It's going to cost time and money, and you're going to break. It. A lot, you're going to break a lot of dishes. You're going to mm-hmm. spend a lot of money on wine and meat. And for a long time, I would just buy large pieces of meat and we would have... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we, we actually got past the point where well, a large piece of meat would I'd work. I'd have to get so many large Wait, pieces of meat. that's a tip. That's a funny thing because I remember when there were a lot of kids, 
Luke would come carve the meat for you. Oh, yeah. And he, one thing we would always do is carve a whole bowl of bite-sized yeah. meat. Yeah. Like, he would use the, the electric hand, knife to chop up, beef. like, to cube it <clears throat> into, yeah. or the pork loin. Yeah. Just cube. Pork all. loins will still work. And they are economical. Yeah, and yeah, you can yeah. Do But it. I meant, I meant, but he I'm would do saying, the whole thing. And you we would get, have a whole like, bowl. Three of them. A whole just bowl of pre, up, yeah. pre-cut Kid food. And the dads, <laughs> we'd get all the kids at the table, and the dads would come in, and they would walk around with the mashed potatoes. The dads and, would serve the and kids. And serve yeah. all the kids' food, and <clears throat> get them all taken care of. And then... Oh, and we'd have to make rules, like, that the kids could not come uh, get seconds before the adults right. had all been through the line. Yeah. Because the kids were... They, they would die They were so starving, <clears throat> and plus it was food that they loved the most. Yeah. So, when the kids were really little, I feel like we were really... We had a lot of the Reese's frozen dinner rolls. Oh. It was like Sabbath rolls. Oh, yeah. And your Rhodes. cheese pe- roads. Not Reese's. What's Reese's? Pieces. No, that's certainly <laughs> not. How funny. Roads. I would um, get a couple of bags of those and get them out, you know. In the morning and, sometime. And, well, no, it just takes a couple hours to rise and then two or three hours. And I then guess they were warm them. still. And then honey butter. And there Honey would be butter a is large... half honey, half butter mixed up and Actually, it's delicious. it's not. It's... It's, I always do it equal parts. Yeah, you know, I don't. I do half as much honey as butter. But well, you do, do it I your do way. Equal parts. Yeah. Interesting. You can do it however you want. Actually, when I say that, I just don't really soften, measure it. I just, just look at the it. Butter. I leave some butter out and don't I pour melt, honey over it. Yeah, don't melt the butter. But it's like if you do a cup of butter, do half a cup of honey. But do and then it however you want. Stir that thing up and then you put it on warm rolls and it's Oh, epic. my word. But, and it's very Sabbathy. Honey butter is a And when is the a rolls Sabbath. come out of the oven... <clears throat> You walk around with a cube of butter with the in. Rub it on it. Yeah, and rub over all the tops. Yeah, and the kids, it makes so the house So we would do those, smell and we good. would also do the cheese potatoes. Cheese potatoes. Which is like, for, wasn't it like frozen hash browns? Well, with... frozen hash browns is like the cheater's way to do it. You know, when you're making mountains of but it. But didn't we do that? I used to just cook the potatoes and cut them up. Oh. And then I moved on to frozen. Why would we then cook a potato when we were making that much? I you know. just no. But that so anyway, I but we don't I, have those that often now. No, and when we, we don't. do, when we do, it's like the kids are all singing "Home on the Range." I They're know, so they do excited have their about favorites. that. Yeah. And but that part of what I was what it meant is that we were not try. We were. There was a lot of focus on delighting the people who are actually yes. there. Yes. Like, and not trying to achieve some standard no. in the sky that no. does oh, not actually connect to the people at your table. We would put um, butcher paper down on the table sometimes. And oh, yeah. Crayons. Coloring crayons all down the table. We still do that when we do sap, uh, um, soup nights. We do yeah. coloring on the table for the kids because that's oh, a fun... Oh, and our, and our supplies. Like, okay, so we started uh, just accumulating... Folding tables, folding chairs, all kinds of tablecloths, all kinds mm-hmm. of... I'm a big fan, I have to just, say. I'm a big fan. There's things that I really, that I have learned. Benches, which is a, a bench that you can put behind can couches. Store, if you have a no, place but, to store but it. benches can, you probably have places in your living room oh, yeah. that you could sneak a bench in and not yeah. really notice. So like in your living room now where... The windows go down low, so the couch is off of the window a yeah. little ways. We can put, I can put a couple yeah. benches behind the couch, and you don't see them. No, I love any time except for when you yeah. have to whip them out to use yeah, them. Yeah, I love a bench. And the for other sure. thing is drop leaf tables. If you can mm-hmm. find tables that you can use as an accent table in your living room, if it can pretty much go up against up. the wall, but when you're yeah. having people, you can flip it up and put benches around it, and right. you have another, yeah. So, I mean, just so many supplies for different times then, of the year. And then you got into, you bought a bunch of drop cloths, and those hallway, oh, so hallway length brilliant. drop cloths work great as And that cloths. is like for painters, you know, but, but I, I think, Becca, I don't know where I got the idea, but I found these at the hardware store. You just actually store. can buy a lot of hemmed and, canvas, essentially. Yeah. And I cut some of these for hallways in half and hemmed them so they would cover one table, and then I kept some the full length because sometimes it's really fun in the yard to do one long, Big, long, 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 long table, which was maybe be four or five of the yeah. folding well, tables. With those and drop cloths, they're, so they're really stiff. They're really stiff and awkward at first. But they wash, um, they bleach. At, they if, are you, great. if you put them in the washing machine with a lot of bleach, fresh out of the package, pretty much, and let them sit 
for a little while, like a couple hours. Uh-huh. I would say maybe three hours with quite a bit of bleach in there. Then wash it. Then rinse them and wash them. And maybe you might have to rinse them again if it's a lot of bleach in them. And dry them. They come out like that really, like a really rough linen-y kind of a very yeah. pretty. I never did that with ours. No, I you just bleached washed them yours. a lot. You, ble- you did bleach them and you washed them a lot. Yeah, every week, so, dump the bleach on all the wine stains. Yeah. Throw them in the throw wash. In. They're and like so duro and they're soft. I hang them and, out over yeah. the deck to dry. Yep. Or, and I'm still using them all the yeah. time and washing them. And, and you know, they're house. a really pretty muslin-y cover, co- color. Natural and color, yeah. But so they weren't, do, but they sometimes are kind of dark at the beginning. But yeah. if you wash them with bleach, they, they, they soften look, a yeah. lot and look like a really they're pretty cotton. They're very durable. And then I do runners, napkins. Yep. I love colored napkins. I just love cloth napkins, and they're not that big of a deal Mom, to wash. you're on the right podcast as a person who wants to talk oh, yeah. about cloth but napkins. I was, just, <laughs> I was wanting what? to interrupt you when you're having all those discussions about pizza boxes because I'm like, girls, don't. Don't. I just, I just but pull I them out of the moved, dryer. We moved I into the pants hangers. I, I moved into it. the pants hangers. I know, but I just still, I just stuff them in my I buffet still, I and still, don't worry about it. I still struggle between, well, we're, look at us. Here we are off again into well, the we, cloth napkin bushes. But I'm just going to say that it's just fun to have a stash. Yeah. And they last and last and last and you wash and wash and wash. And, right. You know. So I, here's a question. How do you think Sabbath dinner changed you? How did it change me? Oh my goodness. I mean, because when I think, well, I, think I think of it, like... It built a lot of confidence, I think, because of yeah, having to true. do it every week and having to do it and learning how, you know, learning how to cook for a big crowd, learning my weak spots. You have to, you have to kind of go rogue and just do it. Yeah. You have to figure it out but yourself it was, because it nobody does it for time. you. They don't figure it out No, for you. but it went from 6 to 8 to 10 mm-hmm. to 12 to... And and then just inviting Ben would call and say, Hey, uh, there's a visitor from Yeah, yeah. Can he can I bring him to Sabbath? Like, well we oh, all for do sure. that with anybody. And who's, I know everybody yeah. would do I love that. And one of my favorites was when the grandkids would say, Can I bring a friend to Sabbath? It's like, Oh my word, please yeah. do. I love I, it. I should say my kids uh, sometime came up and now I can't even remember the context. But it was somebody talking about like how it was it was somehow about eating or tables or like yeah. where it came out that they pretty much had never they didn't ever like they had not ever seen a cloth napkin or had a yeah, glass of something not that and unusual. my children just the flat faces of like where have you what? been yeah like and when we talked about it later however it came up if it was like oh I don't really ever eat with my family or you know whatever it was when it came up later it was like they were all just so Sad. hurt yeah. for someone who did not have that and yeah. then lena told me also after she had her trek this year since she's been in high school she's had more things where they were late to sabbath or yeah. they you know they were in a volleyball game and then they get back until later or whatever and she was just like, you just don't realize how much you're going to miss it until yeah. you can't be there. And it's right. the worst thing ever. Like, yeah. I'm really, well, like, I, have I loved, loved, hate loved not that. being there. That when the teenagers, the grandkids are teenagers. They cannot wait to get back. Like, They're like, get me out of this bus and I take me to back. Sabbath dinner. Well, like, even Ben and Becca in Greece, she said, we'll be back for Sabbath. <laughs> that is, everybody is that way. It's like they, we, we roll in from wherever we are trying to be there in time. And, and But when you say, what else did I yeah, learn? Yeah. I just want to say my weak spots. I mean, there. I named that right when the dinner's almost ready and the guests are coming. Mm. The hour of darkness, I call it. And that's a hot spot. And that show. Yeah. Yeah. And you would often come in and see me and be like, <laughs> "It's okay, mom. We're gonna be fine." <laughs> and and you sometimes I would call you girls like, "Okay, look what happened." And how am I supposed to wing this? You know. Yeah. So hitting that point where it was so nice to have experienced cooks on deck, yeah, who could help me manage something that's going south. Yeah. Or like, okay, oh, we had some sweet things happen. Like one time, a man. And, and you know what? Guests come on time. And so when you kids would all drift oh, in problem. late, 
I'd be like, you have to I come still, early. Now that I'm hosting, didn't I do the same thing? Telling everybody, yeah. listen, we have a lot of guests, so please come, come on early. time. Because otherwise, we're trying to make dinner, and, and all the guests are there, and yeah. not the family. Because everyone's like, oh, it's, sorry. You know, like, they're cracking in <laughs> as we got it together. This is like a joint effort. But I do have to say, in this yeah. theme, hosting Sabbath, one of my favorite things is when you're late. Oh, because, yeah. Because I love that you're also playing a different part in the, the, the <laughs> Me? What are you yes. talking about? Never. Or when, or when no, mom I, leaves pans or bowls at, at I, yeah. her house because mom is almost <gasps> as a level of efficiency at getting other people's stuff out of her house that oh you've goodness. never fathomed. Because after Sabbath, there would you were be like, Here's so a many sock. Things. Here's like, this. Whose is this? And I now know. I just walk away a like, sweatshirt. Oh, get it I know, but it, but it kills me. It kills me to have... <laughs> To have it and be I like des- a stack of stuff yeah. for me to give back to you. I at totally the door. deserve I love it. it. It's totally. so good. But just learning that, you know, I'm frail, I'm weak, I can't do this by myself. Like this is going to be hard. Yeah. And but also having you all big enough and to help. And I also went through a long time of inviting two or three granddaughters over to help do mm-hmm. setup, so they know I have a little bin of tiny salt and peppers in the buffet yeah, yeah. and they go put them outside yeah. on all the tables and they know where the candles are to light and they know mm-hmm. where how to set the table and I show yeah. them yeah and it was that was a really sweet time having the yeah. granddaughters come help I out. think that so many of those things God has just arranged for us because it wasn't a plan in advance it's just the situation and the time right. yeah made that happen but what I was going to say is that Sabbath has taken a lot of your energy as like a grandmother that's been your primary, yeah. that has been your primary, well, not that you haven't done lots of other things, but I mean, that's been your primary role in the family right. for a long time. And the interesting thing is, is that even to your kids, and I think I would speak for all of us about this, it's been more fundamental to your mothering than I can even remember in our early yeah. childhood. Mm-hmm. But part of the reason is because how much of a gift it was to us in raising our own little children to have Mm -hmm. someone carrying the same desire but older than us. Mm -hmm. That our houses, you know, when we had a bunch of little kids, it's not like we were going to make a house looking amazing for a dinner. I mean, we could try to make something special happen. But when you're pregnant, when things are, I mean, it's hard. It's not, would not have been easy. And that that was a real gift that it ended up being a real gift in our own parenting that you were still so actively Mm -hmm. parenting Mm -hmm. because it wasn't just the, I don't know, it's not just spoiling. It was very, it was a very simple thing around something we all share. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord's day and our faith and family. And this is so, so fundamental. Um, but it has taken up a lot. I I just think in my opinion, Sabbath dinner really shaped you as a mother and a grandmother. Totally. That this totally. is that this is actually like this is yeah. your legacy. That yeah. this is what's happening. Yep. Um, and, and I when think the kids would file in. I'd say you know they'd all come in and give me and they'd say Happy Sabbath, Nana, and give me a hug. You know, and it right. was just like a these little rituals started without us planning them. Totally, and I'm, I'm we're here in Mom's office, I and I see over that. here this book that we made for her that was. Uh, for Mother's Day. For Mother's Day that was all the pictures that all of us, which weren't very many because it turns out that we, I mean, it's a whole book worth. It's a but book it turns Sabbath out that pictures. we don't, um, it turns out that we don't take pictures of it. We just enjoy it. But you know, I, it's funny, the different phases, like you were talking about when we first started having borders and they were all Rachel's good friends. I just remember that time. I have it in my mind of what yeah. that looks like. But it's so different. And but it was, that, that was an That was an important. era. That was like a four-year era while they were there, three to four years. And then as the kids started coming, and, you know, it's just, it's grown and sweetened and matured. I so I was going to say on one page of this, we had all the kids write one word that describes Sabbath. And put it on a sticker, on a mailer sticker, and we stuck them all over here. But the words uh, that are in here is life-saving, joyful, an inheritance, gift, anticipated, fantastic, tremendous, epic, epic, epic. There's three different epics. <laughs> one one epic from Chad with a K at the end. <laughs> it's epic. Uh, a time for family, fun, family, loyalty, fruitfulness. Sine qua non, fun sauce. I mean, it's so, but yeah. this is, it's so formative for mm-hmm. all of those kids. And it has been, but it's 
formative of such a powerful, beautiful thing, which is family and your faith, your what the Lord's Day means, what it is to right. what it is to be a Christian, is so formative. But what it feels like you're doing mm-hmm. is it, it feels like dishes and sweating over a frantic oh, yeah. something at the end. Oh yeah, it feels like it does not. You not you're not in the kitchen. But it feels like both. It's I agree because the Lord the gives you lots of moments oh, to see it, but I still yeah. mean that there. That the sensation of doing it right. is not the sensation of looking back to see what has been done. Right. Right? Like the yeah. sensation of going forward right. and like, oh my word, it's already another Saturday and here I go right. again. And it would be to do this again. Yeah, it would be all day Saturday. <laughs> and then, I still think it's one of my favorite things you know? when people come, when they come to Sabbath and say... So what did you do today? Oh, I know. I just would always. <laughs> I'm always say, like, well, well, I did. Things. I was doing this. I yeah. think. I think pretty mostly. <laughs> mostly, what you see is what yeah. I did today. Yeah. Um, but I, I love it, and I love to think about how God will use it in the future because we don't even right. know what that. Well, what, and it's I love still the so era young. that we're in right now because mm-hmm. we've been going up to our house for Sabbath that you're hosting, yeah. but it's. It's never been, you know, it's like this hodgepodge of outdoor uh, tables. Yeah. And that is, I've got to go check on Grandpa. She's going to go check on Grandpa. Hold on. She's paging me. Just wait one second, Mom. Oh. She left. She's leaving. I was going to say, but... well, we've been gone long enough, so we'll just say, so cheers to you as you yes. start your traditions. Happy Sabbath, and, and don't quit while the cloud oh. is still the size of a man's fist. And enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it. it. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.